What's up guys, in this video, what I wanna do is show you how to identify the difference between a whole and an asymptote of a rational expression. And I wanna do that by going through three different examples, an easy example, a kind of medium example, and then a hard example. So usually, typically an easy one is gonna like break down the process. And then the hard one might be something you'll see on like a test or a quiz to really kind of make sure you know what you're doing, all right? Now, along the way, I wanna kind of highlight some um, tips that I give to my students, as well as some common mistakes that I have seen throughout the many, many years I've been teaching um, rational expressions. So let's go and take a look at this first example. And what I'll try to do is explain here the process that I like to follow to be able to identify the difference between a whole and an asymptote of a rational function. So the first example I'm gonna do is fx equals a three x divided by three x minus six. All right, so when you, uh, whenever you're trying to identify the um, discontinuities, the horizontal, I'm sorry, the vertical asymptotes or the holes, the first thing I always want you to do is simplify, 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 all right? And what I mean by simplify is you wanna look for factoring out, all right? And because what we're gonna be doing, the one process we're gonna be doing a lot is what we call the division property, or at least that's what we're gonna be looking for. So let's just go and take a look at the numerator and denominator separately. First at the numerator, I'm gonna say, all right, can I factor anything out? And it's just a three X, so there's really nothing we can do. So we're gonna leave it just as it is. All right, now the denominator here, you have a three X minus six, and hopefully you recognize those are what we have a common factor of three. So what I can do now is I can factor out a three or divide out a three here, and that's gonna leave me now with a three times an X minus two. Now, if you're a little bit tricky, I'm like, how did you like do that? Are you sure that's right? Remember, you can always like multiply back the number, like three times X is three X, three times negative two is negative six, okay? But now that is in what we call our simplified form. Now what we wanna do is look for terms that are in the numerator as well as the denominator that are exactly the same. And the reason why factoring is so important because when we do factoring, what we're doing is we're rewriting our expression as now a product. And the reason why that's so important is because when you want to apply the, um, the zero product, pro no, sorry, not the zero property, the division property, you gotta have your term separated by multiplication. So do you see how three is being multiplied by X and three is being multiplied by the quantity X minus two? Well, those are being multiplied and you can notice there's a three in the numerator as well as the denominator. So guess what? Those are now going to divide out. So now I have a final simplified expression right, which is going to be an X divided by an X minus two. Okay, so now let's go into our identifying of what exactly do we have. So the reason why we have, well, the reason why we call them discontinuities is because they're gonna be like a break in the graph. Now, when we have a removal, or I'm sorry, a non-removal discontinuity, what that means is that's going to be a vertical asymptote. And I'm just gonna use a VA to represent that. So vertical asymptotes or holes um, or discontinuities are going to occur here. At least your vertical uh, asymptote and hole are going to occur when you're gonna make your denominator equal to zero. So um, what we wanna do is find, well, what values make the denominator equal to zero? Now, sometimes it's pretty obvious like this, right? But sometimes it's not. So what I always like to do is like, once you have it simplified, take your denominator and set equal to zero, and then you can say X is equal to two. So we are going to have a vertical asymptote when X equal to two. And again, like it makes sense, right? Take a two, plug it back in for X, two minus two is zero. You can't divide by zero, right? So that is going to be a vertical asymptote. But if you were to sketch the graph or to understand the behavior of this graph, we know that the graph is not defined at X equal to two. But what about a hole? Like what's the difference between a hole here? Well, a hole kind of has the same qualities, but a hole is something that gets removed or that can be divided out. So a big mistake that a lot of students will do is say, oh, well, the threes got divided out, so maybe there's a, th a hole at x equals three. And no, right? Because remember, if it's a hole, it's still gonna make the denominator equal to zero. When you plug three into the denominator, do you get zero? No, right? If three minus two is one. So x is, um, um, there is no holes in this example. And again, Another reason um, that what we can do then when to understand this is the threes are being divided out. Those are just scalar multiples, okay? Those are not actually values that um, are, the function is not defined for. Remember, these are discontinuities. Our function is not gonna be defined at these values. Our function can be defined for three, right? We can plug in three. There's no problem with that. So therefore, in this example, we only have a vertical asymptote when X is equal to a two. All right, now let's go and take a look at another example. Um, I'll call this one H of X. All right, and then in this one, we're gonna have a x squared minus nine divided by a x squared minus a five x plus a six. Okay, so this will be a little bit more of a medium example. And you can see definitely the factoring is gonna be a little bit more advanced. Um, nothing crazy though. Like, any, you know, if you're doing vertical um, asymptotes and holes, then you should have some familiarity with graphing, I'm sorry, with factoring um, quadratics at this point. 
so hopefully recognize here this x squared minus 9. Um, that can be factored as a difference of two squares of a x minus 3 times an x plus 3. Okay. And then my denominator, again, I'm looking for what two numbers multiply to give me a 6, add to give me a negative 5. Um, that should be a x minus 3 and x minus 2. So x minus 3 times an x minus 2. One of the big common mistakes, again, students will make is they'll say, oh, it's supposed to be, you know, um, negative 5 and positive 1, right? But again, those multiply to give you a negative 6, not a positive 6. So just make sure you always check your work. Again, you can always multiply these back by doing the distributive property if you want to go ahead and check my work. Okay, so remember, now I have these quantities, okay, that are separated by multiplication, all right? So now I can apply the division property. And hopefully you recognize here, the x minus threes are the exact same in the numerator as well as in the denominator. So guess what? Those are now gonna go ahead and divide out, okay? So let's go back and identify here what our final answer, our simplified answer is going to be. And that is just going to be a x plus a three divided by a x minus two. Okay, so we went through and simplified everything. Now. What was, um, and now let's go and find the values that are still gonna make my denominator equal to zero, okay? Now again, these are ones that even after all the simplifying never got simplified or never got removed, right? So that in this case is going to be an x minus two. So we're just gonna take an x minus two equals zero. And again, you're gonna get an x equals two, okay? And the reason why we call these non-removable is because after we did all of the division, okay? After we did all of this division, x minus two is still there in the denominator. It's a non-removable discontinuity. But let's go and take a look at the whole now, because now we have something a little bit different. X is not a scalar, right? When you have like a normal number, that's a scalar. But in this case, we had an X, we had a variable that got divided out. That is what we're gonna wanna see. And what I want you to recognize here is X minus three, this expression in this um, in the denominator, when you have the number three, three minus three is zero. So there, therefore, we have another number that's gonna make my denominator equal to zero. But what happened? When we applied simplifying, it got divided out. Or in mathematical terms, we like to say it got removed, okay? So again, is it still a discontinuity in the original problem? Yes, because look what happens when you go ahead and set a three into this original example. Three squared is nine. Um, negative five times three is going to be negative 15. So negative five plus um, negative 15 is going to be negative six. Negative six plus six is what? Zero, okay? So anyways, before I get to that, before you even divide this out, just take what you divided out and set equal to zero. And then you have x equals three. So now in this example, you can see we have a removable discontinuity, which is at x equals three, which is again, not defined, not in the function, um, and not in the domain. And then we have a vertical asymptote, which is a non-removable discontinuity, which again, function is not defined for, um, and that is going to be your vertical asymptote. So let's go ahead and do one more, right? And so these would be ones like common in your teacher in your classroom. And number three is probably one that you might see um, from your teacher, right? Your teacher might be like, all right, now I'm gonna really test your guys' skills. See if you guys know what you're doing. All right, so let's use a j of x. And in this example, let's do a 2x cubed minus 6x squared divided by, there's a lot of options of doing this. Um, sometimes I think one of the other hard ones that I like to do, um, which I'll maybe leave as a bonus problem for you guys to be able to do is one where you have like a difference of two cubes. But I thought this one was a pretty good one because I think difference of two cubes is kind of hard to give to students, I think on a test or quiz because you know, it's not something that you use very often. So unless you have like a formula sheet, um, I wouldn't expect many students to remember it, um, or at least not all of my students do. But when you have a polynomial with four terms and you're factoring by grouping, that is something I would expect you um, to be able to do if you're um, learning about holes and asymptotes. So again, let's go through the process, ladies and gentlemen. Simplify, 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 right? And in the numerator here, um, we see we have a common factor of a two as well as an x squared. So I'm gonna factor that out. So I have a two x squared. Um, and that is going to leave me with an x minus a three. Okay, in the denominator now, um, I'm going to do some, some special math, right? I'm gonna factor this out. Let me kind of show you how I like to do this, three x squared. Well, whenever I have a subtraction, I always like to add this as a negative. Okay, and I know a lot of students, sometimes they have trouble with factoring by grouping, so that's why I'm just gonna show it to you this way, okay? So by doing this, now what I'm doing is, um, I'm not changing the problem by adding these parentheses because I'm just separating the add plus a negative, okay? So now I'm gonna factor out the GCF, which in this case is going to be a X squared. And what I'm gonna be left with here is going to be a X minus a three, right? And then here I can factor out a negative four. So by factoring out a negative four, I'm now gonna be left with a X minus three again. Oops, let's just use red again. And now what I want you to see 
is now you can factor out an x minus 3 on both sides. And therefore, you're going to be left with a x squared minus a 4, which again can now be factored down to an x minus 3 times a x minus 2 times an x plus 2, right? Remember that difference of two squares. So let's go ahead and write down all of this work over here. Um, so it's going to be what? A x minus 3 times an x minus 2 times an x plus 2. Okay, so again, are our terms separated by multiplication? Yes, that is why factoring is like, the factoring is like the one thing that I think holds students back from understanding, um, simplifying, you know, graphing or, you know, working with rational expressions. So make sure you have brushed up on those factoring skills. So anyways, is there anything we can now divide up? Do you want to do that? Sorry. Yeah, the x minus three is right. And since our expressions are separated by multiplication, we can divide them out. Now I kind of ran out of space, so I'm going to put this down below. Now left over, I'm going to have a two x squared divided by an x minus two times an x plus two. Okay. Now again, don't divide out these twos, right? Because these twos are inside these quantities, right? Which are separated with subtraction and addition. So we can't divide them out with this two up here, which is separated with multiplication. Um, there's really nothing else we can do in our numerator. Our denominators um, has been simplified. And again, let's take a note here of what we have. Our x minus three got divided out, right? Now, if um, if we left it in there, would that still make my denominator equal to zero? Yes. Or what value would make my denominator equal to zero? Well, three, right? So we'd say a whole and x minus three, so they're equal to zero. So therefore, x is equal to a three, right? And again, that makes sense. When you plug in three, you get zero. Now again, you divide it out. It's not going to make the simplified expression zero, but it would make the original expression zero. That's why it is what we call a removable discontinuity and a whole. Now let's go and take a look at a vertical asymptote. Well, vertical asymptotes are the non rule all right? What did not get to, what did not get um, removed? Well, that's going to be the x minus two times the x plus two. So you just set the denominator equal to zero, and now here you can just use the zero product property, right? You can say x minus two. Oops. X minus two is equal to zero. X plus two is equal to zero. So therefore, x equals two, and x equals negative two. So in this example, we're going to have two vertical asymptotes and one whole. So hopefully this video was helpful for you in understanding the difference between holes and vertical asymptotes. If you want more examples, check out the examples I have for you down below, or check out the next video I have for you here. Cheers.